Hey guys, uh, so I come to you with the last part of my uh, obscene vacation uh, book haul. Um, so uh, this is kind of a special installment in the book haul because um, I also want to talk a little bit about the bookstore where I bought these books. Some of you may have heard of uh, Dove and Hudson Bookstore, which is in Albany, New York. Um, it's a relatively well-known indie bookstore in Albany, New York. Um, has kind of an aged owner who's struggling to find someone to, t to take over after him once he retires. Um, and uh, my mom and I went into Albany while I was home uh, visiting to go to that bookstore because she asked me something I might like to do and I the only thing I could think of was to go visit that bookstore because I had read a uh, an article about it in the Times Union on Facebook. Um, but uh, when we went there, it was uh, like August 2nd or 3rd and the book, the that bookstore is always closed the first seven or so days of the month, and so it was closed. Uh, so we were kind of left, we were kind of there in Albany. We'd driven like a half hour to get there, which isn't that long, but still, um, we were kind of disappointed to have driven uh, all the way there to have it closed. Uh, so I just googled if there were any other indie bookstores in Albany, and just so happened that. Right down the street was a, a bookstore called Urban Aftermath Books, um, and we were lucky because that bookstore is only open Friday and Saturday, but um, it was, I believe, Saturday um, <clears throat> that day, and um, so we went there, and it was just right down the street from Dove and Hudson Bookstore, and uh, it was really cool. Uh, it's this, um, it's obviously a, sh obviously a shop where you can go in and you can look around at the books that they have, and they have a incredible selection. They have a ton of, like, really old and rare editions, and also a lot of sort of out, really out-of-print old books, um, a two, few of which are going to be in this haul. Um, <clears throat> but just a lot of old books that are maybe out-of-print, obscure books, and also just lovely editions of, like, classics that you might have heard of. Like, they had the, these lovely leather-bound editions of... Um, of like Livy and Tacitus and all these old classics, they had a bunch of uh, modern library editions of a of a ton again of a ton of classics of you know Thomas Aquinas and uh, um, and Dickens and others uh, and uh, yeah it was just super cool and I had a great time looking through it um, but it's also an online store um, so I'll leave a link to the to their website um, they uh, the shops works through Amazon in its online shopping, and, um, <clears throat> I have, like, 30,000 more books there, and, um, yeah, so, again, just tons of out-of-print and old, obscure books, uh, and, uh, so I just had a field day in there, and I, um, had to exercise a lot of restraint in what I bought, because it, um, they, it's a used bookstore, so it's well-priced, but it's still not, like, it's not like a library sale where it's, you know, a dollar per book or something, you still have to sort of be a bit uh, moderate in what you buy. Um, but anyway, I bought several books and asked the owner if he would just send the books to me here in Iowa, and he said that would absolutely be fine. And they just arrived today. So, um, yeah, I just want to go through them with you, and I want to recommend Urban Aftermath Books as an online shopping place to shop, or if you're in Al in the Albany area, uh, you could, might consider go going to visit it. Um, yeah, so anyway, without further ado, I will get on to the books. Um, the one that I may be most excited about that I found was this. Um, this is Wagner as sorry Wagner as man and artist, um, and yeah, this was published in 1937 by Garden City Publishing. Um, it's by Ernest Newman, and um, oh no, it was published in 1924. Sorry, um, it must have been reissued in 1937. Um, but as far as I can tell, when I looked it up online, it is out of print. Um, but, uh, it is a book that discusses Richard Wagner's, uh, life and his music, I presume. Uh, and, um, I love Wagner's music. Uh, he himself was a complicated man. Uh, he was kind of an anti-Semitic racist and kind of also just a generally unpleasant person. Um, but also had a lot of, like, personal charisma. Even people who who he had really alienated and done and said terrible things to still sort of admired him just because of just because of the force of his personality was so um, enchanting to a lot of people. Uh, and yeah, so I'm super excited to read this uh, because again, I love his music um, and I am interested in learning more about him as a person. So yeah, that was a great find. I was super excited to see this. Um, next one is 
probably even more obscure. It's uh, The Science of Poetry and the Philosophy of Language by Hudson Maxim. And when was this published? Um, this I know without a print because I looked it up online and couldn't find it anywhere. Um, it's published in 1910. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a basic discussion of poetry, what poetry is, and um, it also sounds like it might touch a little bit on uh, the study of linguistics, um, which, yeah, again, should be fascinating and is right up my alley. I obviously love poetry, uh, as anyone who's watched my channel for some time will know, uh, but I also find linguistics fascinating. So uh, that was, again, just another one where I kind of plotted when I saw it. And kind of a, kind of a lovely book, don't you think, with the, has the circles like this? It's kind of cool. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, and lastly, the last um, three books are all kind of of a piece. They're they're in sort of a series together. Um, there were uh, a bunch of these uh, editions published by Prentice Hall, which are just um, uh, collections of essays, uh, critical essays about poets. And they had um, they had they had so, a ton. I mean, they had uh, John Donne. They had uh, William Butler Yeats. They had Emily Dickinson. Um, you know, uh, Ezra Pound, anyone you could think, any famous English English poet, mostly, that you could think of, they, they had. And um, they were $5 each, uh, so well-priced for hardcovers and for books like this. But again, I had to be a bit um, selective, so I went with three that uh, just seemed to me to be uh, absolutely essential to me. So we have um, the T.S. Eliot edition, uh, edited by Hugh Kenner, and... Um, Let's see, who else is in here? Um, obviously, we have essays by Hugh Kenner, um, R.P. Blackmer, Wyndham Lewis, um, and the essays, we have an essay called To Meet Mr. Eliot, um, Early London Environment, uh, Irregular Metaphysics, uh, Lewis Carroll and T.S. Eliot as Nonsense Poets, uh, Eliot and Tennyson, that should be interesting, um, an essay about the wasteland, um, T.S. Eliot's later poetry, uh, a, a poem by Alan Tate about Ash Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just a really eclectic uh, collection of essays about T.S. Eliot, and T.S. Eliot is a poet who I love, so that's great. Um, and next, you'll all have seen this coming, Wallace Stevens. Uh, this is edited, edited by Marie Boroff. And um, let's see, what, what do we have in here? Um, three Academic Pieces by Wallace Stevens. Okay, so this actually has an essay by Wallace Stevens himself. Um, then there's the genre of Wallace Stevens, Metamorphosis in Wallace Stevens, um, Notes Toward a Supreme Fiction, a Commentary by Harold Bloom, <laughs> of all people. Uh, we have uh, Wallace Steven Stevens, The Image of the Rock. Um, Wallace Stevens and the Image of Man. Um, so yeah, again, just a eclectic... Uh, collection of essays on Wallace Stevens, my favorite poet. Um, and then finally, we have uh, Walt Whitman. Um, and this is edited by Roy Harvey Pierce. And uh, what do we have in this one? Um, uh, the Integrity of Leaves of Grass. Uh, we have an essay in here by D.H. Lawrence on Walt Whitman and an essay by Ezra Pound on Walt Whitman. Um, we have uh, America's Epic, an essay about uh, Leaves of Grass. Um, only a language experiment, not sure what that'll be about. Uh, Whitman as symbolist. Uh, Whitman's style from mysticism to art. Uh, Whitman's poetic ensembles. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that should be super cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, let's do a little, I don't usually do these, but let's do, I'll do a little tower of my books that I bought at uh, Urban Aftermath. So we have uh, Wagner as man and artist. We have uh, the science of poetry. I'm not sure I'm going to get this quite right. And then we have um, we have T.S. Eliot, we have uh, Wallace Stevens, and we have Walt Whitman. So yeah, anyway, that is my haul from Urban Aftermath Books. Let me know if you have thoughts on these books uh, or on anything else in the video. Uh, and yeah, anyway, I will talk to you all later. Bye guys!